Hi everybody, it's Erin Scott here. So let's dive in. We're going to take a look very quickly. This will be a brief video, but we are going to look at the narratives playing out for this particular Mercury retrograde cycle. We're going to look at this through a particular lens. We're also going to look at the Sabian symbol for this particular point at which Mercury stationed retrograde. So there's a couple of things that I want to talk about here. The first is wind wind. So we have been having major storm system winds move through since last night. And today the winds are just fantastic. They're very powerful, very strong. And indeed, I took some video footage, which you're seeing. Okay. It's a fantastic time for internalization and internal processes. And that's precisely what a Mercury retrograde in Scorpio is all about. That's exactly what it's about. And um, there's, there's a certain depth and an exponential growth of power within each of us as individuals that is being prompted and naturally activated over the course of this growth cycle with Mercury retrograde. So let's talk about it. Firstly, this is the chart for the exact moment that Mercury went retrograde. October 31st, Halloween at 11.41 a.m. Eastern Time. That was the exact point. So there's a blueprint with that. And we want to look at the blueprint, the signature, the recipe, the narrative, the story of this particular cycle of retrograde. It's very powerful, everybody. Now, you have to understand that this particular chart is an Eastern U.S. chart. If I were pulling this up for the West Coast or for the U.K. or for another area in the world, there would be a different ascendant point. But I do want to talk about this particular ascendant and descendant axis because this is part of the encoding, at least for a demographic of people. There's a specificity to this particular narrative. It, it is quite amusing because yesterday on October 31st, 2019, indeed, the U.S. government here um, went through a resolution process, a voting process on the impeachment inquiry and resolutions around that. And if we look at that, so and this is impacting the globe. This is impacting the entirety of kind of geopolitics throughout the world, okay? That being said, look at what we have here. At this point when Mercury went retrograde, it's stationed retrograde at 27 degrees, 35 minutes Scorpio. At that point, a couple of things have occurred. One is that for all of us, the moon was exactly conjunct Jupiter at 23 degrees Sagittarius. That in itself is huge, and we'll talk about that. <clears throat> For the eastern U.S., including Washington, D.C., look at what was on this ascendant point. 29 degrees, 5 minutes, Sagittarius. 29 degrees, critical degree Sag, ruled by Jupiter. In this particular chart, Jupiter is with the moon in the 12th house, which is karmic process. It's also the soul structure within, in this case, the event. So the soul structure within the event is activated by this exacerbated moon. What matters is truth. The moon, the function of the moon in any chart is what we are emotionally resonant with. It's what matters to us. It's what has meaning for us. Jupiter is right on the moon. So what has meaning for us during the process of this three weeks of Mercury retrograde? Naturally, what matters is our truth. What is truth? It's the seeking of truth. And it's also the seeking of higher truth. Keep in mind, this 29 degree Sagittarius Ascendant is a critical degree. There's pressure imbued in it. There's a pressure there's a pressure to mature how we assimilate truth, how we discern truth, 
how we move forward according to natural law. That's the pressure for this particular three-week process of Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, ruled by Pluto. There is a transformational process inherently happening with this reviewing of the mind, a deeper dive of the mind, Pluto Scorpio. There's a deep cycle, naturally, for everybody and for the collective, there is a deeper psychological dive going within, exploring the shadows, seeing what's hidden, seeing what's veiled, pulling it up out into the light, transforming the secrets into uh, seen, provable realizations. That's what's activated naturally now. And in addition to all of that, Mercury was conjunct both Pallas Athena at 26 degrees and Venus at 28 degrees. So what does that mean? Well, the mind, the function of Mercury, the mind, are where we are focused, how we are thinking, in what area we are thinking, etc., how we how we are communicating. All of those functions within each of us is imbued with the energies of both Pallas Athena and Venus. Now both of those are femi the feminine. Pallas Athena, the goddess Athena, is the goddess of wisdom. So there's an empowered feminine, crone, assimilated, matured wisdom that is part of the archetype of Pallas Athena. And Pallas Athena is the goddess of war. This is the empowered feminine who will go to war or go to battle as needed. So think about that, everybody. Think about what's going on on the global stage, not just with U.S. politics, but in the U.K. and in other areas of the world, in Chile. You know, there's, there's many, many areas that are uh, inflamed, so to speak, right now quite literally California, but many places are on fire, inflamed mind, inflamed emotions, inflamed patriarchy, inflamed imbalance, okay? So just think about that. And what we're talking about here is Scorpio ruled by Pluto. Pluto is plutonic, it's intense, it's powerful. It is the emulation of the phoenix, so this is fire, intense fire. So what we have here is the mind going down deep into the psychology, everybody, of each of us as individuals. There's a natural need, in other words. There's a natural call. There's a natural urge, a natural prompting to go deep, to do self-inquiry, to do inner reflection, to be still, to be quiet and reflective. Now, is there also communications to prompt forward during this time? You better believe it. Because we have Pallas Athena, this goddess of war and wisdom, right on the mind. And in addition, we have Venus there. Venus also in Scorpio. So Venus is our values. How we love the self. How we love others. What is it that we love? What is our ethos? Okay? And Venus is our values as it extends out in the, in the real world, such as possessions and finances and the beautiful artistic creations that humans make. All the things that we value and how value equates to money, right? So it's finances as well which is kind of imbued in this narrative. But what we have definitively, everybody, is Mercury sandwiched here with feminine and feminine. Venus, of course, is a feminine goddess here. So what we're talking about is a lot of kind of reflective, contemplative, holistically seen feminine energy and feminine quality sets within each of our minds that is really... Uh, part and parcel to the process of transformational reflective mind over the course of this next three weeks. In addition to all of that, 
uh, we have the stellium in the eastern chart in this 11th house, which is the house of the humanitarian. So there's some sort of bigger, broader humanitarian cause that's coming forward. And again, because this moon is conjunct Jupiter exactly in this 12th house of kind of a karmic unfolding, at least for the U.S., at least for the eastern U.S., which is certainly where we have our seat of government, okay? So there is a, a, a need for truth. 23 degrees, too. Let's talk, let's talk about that. And I'm going to pull up 23 degrees with the symbology as well. Um, 23 degrees, we have two and three. Two is about relationship, fairness, justice, balance. Three is about um, expression, communication, collaboration, teamwork creativity, the birth of something new, and together two and three is five, which is all about uh, chaos process, action, change, movement, and also creativity and freedom, freedom. So there's an issue here of kind of what matters is the truth and ultimately being free, having the higher mind free and expanded, okay? With the pressure of growing up, and assimilating all of the archetypal growth narratives that are intrinsic to Sagittarius. This is naturally going on during this course of this next three weeks, individually and on the collective. Now, again, according to this particular chart, which shows this Eastern U.S. narrative, we have this intensified stellium of transformation, new beginnings, and the release of past patterns happening in Capricorn in the first house. So Pluto and Saturn in the south node, first house. So indeed, this kind of uh, default way of operating that is very kind of rooted in individuation, me, 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 that's first house. The first house is naturally the house of the self. So this kind of Pluto-Saturn South Node is old, rigid, dogmatic patterns of domination, of control, of me, me, me orientation. It's all about me. It's all about my journey, my perspective, my needs, my this. Well, no, that's not the growth edge. That's what's transmutating with this Pluto here. That's the new beginnings that needs to be manifested here. And thus, the limits that Saturn's bringing with regards to Capricornian governments and politics and politicians and heads of state and everything else, right? The growth edge, again, in this particular chart is definitely, let's say, underscoring the need to grow and mature and evolve into compassionate, empathetic relationship, seeing and feeling the reality of the other, actually opening up the scope of self-orientation to include the other. That's what this is. And in addition, by the way, everybody, at the point of this particular Mercury retrograde, we have 10 degrees south node, 10 degrees north node. So we have one and zero. This is a binary. One is the individual and, and the self. It's also new beginnings and initiation. Zero is potential. Zero is the initiate. Zero is um, the, the potential for the new story, for a brand new archetypal um, turn of the wheel, okay? And it's also the holistic nature of nature. So one and zero indicates there's potential here. There's potential at this three-week portal of this Mercury retrograde, there's potential for real new beginnings, a new connection to our individual emotional guidance system, as opposed to vilifying it, as opposed to uh, discarding it, uh, ignoring it, um, shaming it, not listening to it, not attending to it, ignoring it, etc., etc. It's about honoring it. Inherently with the North Node in Cancer, that's the story. We are to step in and reconnect to our emotional, natural emotional guidance system. Your emotions are functional, they serve a purpose, and you are to reconnect with it. Human beings over the last 
multiple hundred years, if not a couple of millennia, have been slowly but steadily um, disconnected from our wholeness, right? So uh, there's a big process that we're all undergoing right now, which is this has function, you are to honor it, and you are to listen to it. Because if you don't, it's too reduced. Keep in mind, Saturn, which rules Capricorn, so the sign of Capricorn, the archetype of Capricorn, and its ruler Saturn limits. It limits, it constrains, it focuses, it reduces vision, it reduces the ability to see. And indeed, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So there is naturally a reduced functionality to Capricorn. It's very hyper-focused on achievement, accomplishment, wealth creation, reputation in society, power, right? That's the hyper-focus of it. Naturally, it's more reduced. The polar opposite Cancer, naturally, the archetype of the mother, the archetype of the nurturer, the caregiver, the protector, it requires holistic seeing and observation, meaning the function of the mother. The mother has to see many things all at once to protect the sanctity of the, of the children, of the house, of the home, of the place, of the, of the self. Here, the growth journey for all of us is connection to our own, you know, other aspects outside of the analytic mind. This is connecting back into your emotional guidance system. In addition to that, it's also tapping into your natural intuitive guidance system, which is also functional and very real and alive within every single human being. There's a massive maturity point that's activated, but again, the point of this Mercury retrograde is happening when this happens to be in the 10 degree portal. Okay? So a binary, a potential, there is a completion point. Naturally with 10, there is some sort of maxima, maximization, like some sort of um, com uh, completion point or something's come to a degree of finality. There's almost a completion of a chapter here that's indicated. <laughs> which again, if you're following the news, is fascinating because indeed that's kind of what's activated, okay? There's stuff that's coming calling now, okay? Now, what else? The other thing that I'll say is that at the point of this Mercury retrograde and the imbued narrative that's unfolding for all of us over the next three weeks, we still have the sun opposed Uranus. The Sun opposed Uranus. Now, the Sun opposed Uranus is also still squaring that three degree Leo Varuna, which is, by the way, Varuna's been in Leo, you know, it's there for a while. Okay? It's been there for a while. But my point is, is that the imbued narrative for this three-week process has Sun still opposed uh, Uranus. And there's still this T-square activated, which I talked about when I talked about the monthly energies from this new moon point that we just had. So for those who haven't watched the monthly, you can go and watch the monthly. But the issue here is quite powerful, I have to say. This is power here because for some people, this is going to, for every single individual, this is going to manifest differently. For some people, Uranus opposed the sun and squaring Varuna can look like entitlement and hyper arrogance and the laws don't apply to me and I can do anything I want and my value system doesn't really matter. I don't have an ethos. I don't have any morals. For some people, there's going to be kind of this um, process of almost a gosh, what am I trying to say? I was almost saying like ADHD, PTSD, hyperactive, non-grounded and inconsistent identity that is almost this non-grounded sense of self or identity, the sun, is possibly for some people really activated by this Varuna, which can make somebody feel like a super power. It makes them feel like Limits don't apply to me. Bounds don't apply to me. I can be the rebel. I can be this. I can be that because I'm entitled. 
I'm entitled to anything I want. So this particular Varuna squaring Uranus can be quite intense, everyone. This is for all of you to make note of and, and you know, master your own energies, but also to be mindful of the people in your reality. Because indeed, Varuna squaring Uranus can look like erratic action coming from broken psyches. So please be mindful. Please be mindful between now and throughout the 2020 cycle. By the way, for those that are interested in uh, understanding your details of what's happening for your 2020 cycle, which is paradigm shifting, okay? Beginning and ending of 2020 is bookended by two very powerful event horizons where we are changing and shifting and there are certain focuses specific to your blueprint. So for those that are curious about the unfolding growth processes that are coming up for you, my advice is to place your order sooner rather than later because there's a bit of a lead time and I want to make sure that you know I can get you what you need. You can find the links below. But with this particular T-square definitively activated over the course of this deep internal psychological review process that each and every one of us are doing, this kind of unveiling the mysteries within our own life and within our workplaces and within our family dynamics and indeed on the political and global, more governmental and societal systems areas of life, as that unveiling and review process and indeed maturity of mind, which I want to talk a little bit more here about, there's a maturity of mind activated. As that's happening, for a lot of people, this is instigating a new up-leveling and refinement and humanitarian orientation that is imbuing into this scorpionic identity, which is linked to a sense of confidence. Confidence. Varuna in Leo can be confident and to step into its power and its creative gifts in a way that is grounded, assimilated, and in grace. So drink that in, because this particular month looks to be delicious, okay? Is it gonna be without its issues and, and processes and difficulties? No, but you have the power, we each have the power to see it correctly, see it for what it is, understand it's a natural process of growth and evolution, and you can choose or not choose to step into your power, okay? Now, what I was going to say with this Mercury in, at this 27 degree Scorpio is that it just matches so beautifully with this 29 degree Scorpio ascendant because indeed this pressurized point of up-leveling and assimilating and maturing what this archetype has to offer, this Jupiterian archetype, Jupiter and Sagittarius is all about expanding the consciousness through new experiences, new teachings, new teachers, new philosophies, new religions, new travels, new people, new experiences in general. This is big. So there's this optimistic orientation to Jupiter and Sagittarius. When it's immature, it can be naive. When it's mature, this is an assimilated wisdom through a broad life of experience. This is, in other words, assimilated wisdom, everybody. What the process of this deepening scorpionic plutonic mind with Pallas Athena and with Venus is a deepening of the feminine qualities of your mind, along with other things, by the way. I think that there's going to be some other things coming, coming up. There, there will be scorpionic communications coming to light with regards to feminine figures in our collective, public figures, etc. There's probably going to be stuff coming to light or continuing to because it's actually already happening. But when it comes to the individual process that you're going through, please understand that not only is this a matured point, this is a 27 degree scorpionic point. So it's, it's the third deacon. It's a matured scorpionic point. This is about a deep understanding of one's own psychology, of one's, of, one, of one's own patterning, the wound patterning that lives within. By the way, 
I really, I mean this authentically. For those who have not gotten their natal analysis done, this might be a perfect time over the next three weeks to get it because there is an ability naturally set up for you to assimilate at a deeper level your own psychological underpinnings, your own patterns, your own blueprint, your storyline, this particular life process for you. Quite sincerely, that is activated. But with that being said, we're talking about a matured, deepened mind. And indeed, that's what's activated here. This is like a matured, wise mind that is discerning. It doesn't just believe everything it's told. It doesn't just believe everything it's uh, taught, which is what a, a Jupiter, when it's, you know, a Jupiter or a Sagittarius point in the early degrees can be very naive and it's vulnerable and it drinks everything in. It's like, oh yeah, that's truth. This is truth. That's truth, right? The other point that I'll bring up here is that with Jupiter and the moon at 23 degrees, it's a couple of degrees, it's about two and a half, three degrees from the point of the galactic center. So there is this kind of, let's say, energetic, uh, benefic aspect to this particular kind of the need for truth, the deep need for truth that's activated within each of us. And that deep need for truth and indeed karmic playing out when it comes to truth um, is linked to people's desire to be a detective, investigate and go deep within. Not only one's own psychology, but also the narratives that are playing out on the global stage that are hidden or secret. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming to light in the next few weeks, right? All right, beauties, now let's take a look. What is the symbol for this Mercury? Now, the king of the fairies, this is the Sabian symbol that lives at the 28 degree point in Scorpio, which is between 27 degrees and one minute and 28 degrees Scorpio. So that's what we're looking at here for the Mercury stationing retrograde point, okay? The king of the fairies approaching his domain. Again, this is the Sabian symbol, and this was re-articulated from the 1925 channeling. This was re-articulated here by Dane Rudyer. So he went into a deeper explication here, okay? So the keynote, the capacity in human to recognize and to pay homage to an integrating principle at the core of all existence. So before we read another word, I just want you to drink, just be with this symbol for a minute the king of the fairies approaching his domain, okay? So the narrative living within the process of deepening mind over the next three weeks is about approaching your own power. You, as a powerful entity, approaching or aligning with your own power, okay? That's what this is about. So here in the highlighted part, Beyond both outer nature and the realm of the proud ego, a spiritual world exists to which the intuitive consciousness of human can pay allegiance. In that world, all manifested entities are seen as multiple aspects of a central power and consciousness. It is such a, such a central principle of unity that human societies have sought to revere symbolically in human, all too human kings in an individual sense. This principle is the self. So I want you to drink all that in because it's very, very applicable to multiple things that are activated on the global stage, certainly here in the US, okay? This is about you owning your own power, not the shadow power which you project upon another, whether it be a god or a king or some other person in charge, where the deflated self, the weakened self, the enslaved self, the disempowered self, which has the shadow of its own power in there, must then project on another that power. No, no, that's not what's activated. This is about getting clean, getting true, getting clear in your mind, in your psychology, in your blueprint, in your narratives, and in your wound sets about your own power. 
Okay, now what I also want to look at, let me pull this over. I also want to look at something else here. I want to look at the um, 10 degree point for Capricorn. Let's take a look at that. Actually, let's look, let's look here too. Let's look at the 29 to 30 degrees for um, Sag. Okay, beauties, here we go. The Pope, okay? The Pope blessing the faithful. This is the narrative sitting for Eastern US, including Washington, DC. This is the pressurized point, the Pope blessing the faithful. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but let's look at a couple points. The need to pay homage, again, paying homage, yeah? To traditional values upon which the invisible community of the spirit is built. Personalized worship. This concludes scene 18. A collectivity of human beings is seen having transferred their sense of spiritual value to a man who has become an incarnation of their common ideal. The key words, personalized worship, it can be a blessing, in some cases, a curse. Let's read this. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back up and read this. The concrete integration of myriads of human individuals within a great religious institution with a long tradition reflects as well as having produced century after century an invisible spiritual community the flag bearer which is another symbol has now become the pope who assures the role of god's representative on earth oh my goodness how beautiful is this it is a role um it is a role but culture is based on embodying great images and deeply moving symbols in physical reality. The symbol asks of the individual, are you willing to live a transpersonal life as a symbol? This is the final and supreme statement of that section of the cycle of the year represented by Sagittarius. So this kind of personalized worship of somebody that is this pressurized point. This is the critical degree. What do you, how do you own your own power? How much do you give it to another? And stick and cling to traditional values, perhaps. But it certainly has to do with the incarnation of some common ideal. Indeed, the people that we put up on pedestals are the mind. They are us. They are the shadowed aspects of the self, always. That's why they are allowed to be in that role. That's why it happens, okay? So they're playing roles to essentially show us ourselves. And so let's just let that be the case. But indeed, the Pope, this is the pressurized point needing to be grown and assimilated during this process of this next few weeks. Now, what was the other thing that I wanted to take a peek at? There was something else. Oh, the 23 degrees Sag. 23 to 24 degrees. Which is this. A bluebird perched on the gate of a cottage. The reward which meets every effort at integrating into a social environment for those who remain true to their own selves. Drink that in, okay? Okay, just think about that for a minute. A bluebird perched on the gate of a cottage, the reward which meets every effort at integrating into a social environment for those who remain true to their own selves. The bluebird is a symbol of happiness, but also it refers to what one might call a spiritually oriented mind. So let's just stop there for a minute, okay? This is this is what we're looking at here everybody. This is the pro this is exactly the process of mercury retrograde. Do you understand? This is exactly the process. And it's also the power of who you are, understanding your own self, integrating your own mind, your own self. And it's the rewards that come when you do that. You can see good fortune as the keyword down here, key phrase. 
Okay, so the bluebird is a symbol of happiness, but also it refers to what one might call a spiritually oriented mind, to which the color blue relates, especially when a bird is mentioned. A cottage is normally a part of a community, and the implication is that its inhabitants are well adapted either to the life of the community or to their more or less isolated togetherness. This is the fourth stage symbol, and it suggests that the essential technique for successful living is the development of a consciousness in which peace and happiness dwell. There is also a hint that good fortune is going to bless your life. Now, this is interesting because karmically, again, Eastern U.S., including Washington, D.C., karmically, there's something here. What matters is truth. That is a karmic unfolding that's happening as we dive deep and unveil the secrets. And indeed, at this particular point at 23 to 24 degrees, good fortune is at hand here. Truth is coming to light here. There is a level of trust and faith that we can have. Does it mean that we don't participate in the process? No, we still participate in the process. Okay, now let's quickly go to this 10 degree Capricorn since we're so close here. And actually, I'm going to go to the North Node too. So 10 degrees, 10 to 11 degrees Capricorn. A large group of pheasant on a private estate, the refinement and propagation of aristocratic values by means by which humans participate in the evolution of life toward ever more... Um, per feet forms of existence. Ar aristocracy is the narrative here. That's what, I'm not gonna read it all. You can pause this and read it if you wish. But what we have here, everybody, is aristocracy. <laughs> and this says, this just says everything. Like there's no need to even say anymore. The past pattern here that needs to be released and matured has to do with self-orientation, first house, and it has to do with aristocracy. Oh my God, it's so amusing. Now let's let's go to um, the North Node. We're gonna go to 10 to 11 degrees Cancer, okay? Here we go. Okay, feel into this, everybody. I want you to feel into this, okay? Let me do a couple little Let me just open this up a little bit so we can really read it, okay? Now, this is the growth edge. This is the growth edge, and it's linked to this point here. 10 to 11 degrees Cancer, this is the growth edge for us. By the way, it's the growth edge for all of us collectively throughout the planet, okay? A clown caricaturing well-known, this is supposed to be known, okay, personalities. The keynote, the value of humor in developing objectivity and independence of mind. Think about that, feel into that. The growth edge for all of us is to develop more humor and to indeed feel into this, a clown caricaturing well-known personalities. It's the use of humor, essentially, as the growth against the aristocracy, which, by the way, can take itself far too seriously. Why? Because that south node is in Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, highly serious. This is about no sense of humor over here. So where is the growth? Not only it's feeling your feelings and trusting your feelings, trusting your intuitive knowing, but it's also accessing humor, okay? Let's read this and then I'll complete. Humor and irony is a powerful tool in assessing the value of socio-cultural realities and thereby, thereby in freeing oneself from glamor and prejudice. Laughter deconditions and often paves the way to a realization that we need not be unduly impressed by what our tradition has more or less forced upon our consciousness. The clown, of course, is the more popular manifestation of this urge to laugh, which seems to be such a basic characteristic of human nature. Caricature and satire are more intellectual forms of the same need for intellectual freedom. 
In this 21st five-fold sequence, we witness the development of true individuality in human. And the first step is a cathartic one. The ability to laugh, which includes the ability to laugh at one's own petty habits and mannerisms, indeed at one's pomposity. It is a deconditioning step. Absolutely flippin' brilliant, everybody. Absolutely perfect. That is something else because, indeed, as we step in and go deep over the next few weeks, as we unveil our own foibles, our own woundings, our own patterns, simultaneous with that happening, what is also the growth edge? The growth edge is to develop a bit of humor to decondition the serious attachment to the ego's identification of self. This is a very powerful time frame. Very powerful time frame for all of us. Okay? For the collective and for each of us as individuals. I urge those of you interested in your, in your blueprint, understanding your own storylines, be in contact for a natal analysis. For those interested in understanding what's unfolding for your 2020 cycle, you'll want to place those orders sooner rather than later if you want them, you know, before the 2020 process hits, okay? All right, everybody, much love for your month. And I'm going to leave you now with a little bit more of the wind that I filmed just today before this recording. Much love. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.